HTMX. Not HTML, but HTMX. A fairly recent framework slash library that has been making waves. And by that, I mean, I see a lot of people tweeting about it. I've seen people saying uh, it's great. I've seen people saying that it sucks. I've seen people say that uh, their whole mobile app was somehow hacked and modified by some odd vulnerability or something. I don't know. Bizarre. But I figured if it's really that great or if it's really that popular, maybe it's something I should learn for future job prospects. Maybe it's something that I'm going to have to know in the future when, uh, you know, some contract comes up that I need to work on and they're using HTMX. I don't know. So I dove into it. I gave it a fair shot. And the following is that process. So join me as we dig into it and let me know in the comments if you've given it a fair shot, if you like it, don't like it, or if you think that I'm missing something by the end of it and you uh, disagree with my opinion. All right, so let's just get into it. So first and foremost, let's take a look at the docs here. Well, at least this is their, um, their homepage. HTMX gives you access to AJAX, CSS transitions, WebSockets, server sent events, directly in HTML using attributes so you can build modern user interfaces with the simplicity and power of hypertext. HTMX is small, 14 kilobytes when it's GZ'd, dependency free, extendable, and has reduced code base sizes by 67% when compared with React. Motivation. Why should only A and Form be able to make HTTP requests? Why should only click and submit events trigger them? Why should get and post methods be available? Why should only get and post be available? Why should you only be able to replace the entire screen? By removing these constraints, HTMX completes HTML as a hypertext. So here's the quick start guide. So let's just make a new HTML file. And also let's move my face. Hmm over here let's put the HTMX script in the quick start way and, and not doing any sort of node or anything put this button here all right so in the editing process I recognized a very major thing that I figured I should just speed through and explain what's going on instead of making you sit through the pain that I did Straight up, you cannot just use this in an HTML file. I don't know why their quick start guide does not explain anything pretty much, but they try to say, here's a thing, go for it, do it, without really describing how this works or its purpose. They're saying that this makes HTML more powerful, but the problem with that is, is it needs to still have a server. Obviously, that should make sense, but that isn't described in their own attempt to describe anything. So I spent a whole time, now I got to spin up a node server, figure out what data is even trying to be sent by these very vague attributes. After replacing in this and that and the other thing, okay, I finally figured it out. So here's me just getting the very minimum their quick start guide three line example to work <laughs> there we start with slash what is getting replaced here the button all right, so let's see. Okay, now that we made it this far, a little confusing with the node server, just trying to spin it up as fast as I can. I'm gonna get that locked in eventually to the point where it's perfect every time. And anyways, with that being said, let's look at some examples and see how to replace other crap. Let's try this example and see, just jump off the bat what we got here. And bazinga at bazinga.com. Uh, 
Um, all right, so here's another example of they have an example page with all sorts of examples on how to do certain things, but they are the worst examples I've ever looked at in my life. They do not completely describe what they're even trying to do. Their descriptions of what their the purpose is of these different attributes, etc., is so vague and so frustratingly lacking of anything that would make this even work. They should be examples that people could take and test and try. Instead, they are super vague examples of things with names that are so confusing. It's like, what the hell are they thinking? It doesn't make any sense for these examples to be written the way they are, to not show in full detail what they're even trying to do. Like, I clicked a thing because I wanted to be able to see, okay, so they have a table and they have a little form, right? And in order to get the form data, like a new contact into the table, you, first off, their example doesn't even have a button to submit the form. There's no on click or if someone pressed enter, nothing like that even happens. Okay, so you can't even submit the form in their own example without putting an, in, in a button that's not in their example. Okay, so you get past that point. Then we don't even know what this data looks like and how it is being submitted. You'd expect it to be kind of like form data. Yeah, but I get that. But there's nothing saying that that's what happens. And they just go on talking about re-rendering this and that part of the form and the table itself or the whole div. And that is stupid. Why would you do that? But they don't give you any example on how to re-render this table or, the, or, or anything. They just say to do it. So on the node side of things, you just, you're, you're in the dark. And I went through the process of, uh, it, it basically puts in this new data into the table and I am sending back in a whole HTML object to replace what's already there instead of just getting the data back and putting it in the table. It's like, why? Why, 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 why? This doesn't make things easier. It makes them more complicated. This is so silly. Here's the rest of the video. Okay, so that works. I just don't, I just don't see. I just don't see the usefulness of this. Obviously on the node side, you would have to sanitize the hell out of anything that comes through any sort of form. But like, I love that this example says this, but it doesn't explain how that to append itself to the context table, updating the table after a contact is added. Instead of modifying something on the front end in your response to the post context, you would include some additional content. So somehow it knows very clean event driven programming. I don't know, dude. This kind of just sounds like a confusing mess. So solution three, if I'm reading this right, basically, first off, I have no idea how this is supposed to work. All their examples don't have buttons to actually submit these forms. I don't know why their examples are so bad. Let's take a look at some of these repos. I wanted to build more with this, but it just kind of seems like a stupid replacement for something that's better. I don't know why you would want to use this so far. Usually when I jump into a new library, it's kind of exciting. Some of the cool ways it works and stuff like that. But this is, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> HTMX Twitter clone. And we'll dive into this example. Here's their live demo. Okay, it's broken on Heroku. Either way, we'll run it ourselves. All right, here's HTMX Twitter clone. This is one of the examples on their on the GitHub repo. Cranberry tweet. Wow. This is a Twitter clone. First off, it looks nothing like Twitter. <laughs> Why would you even call it that? This is like 
but incredibly all right so on slash tweet is just an object on this page that's loading up i mean for an example that's fine posts pug compile components post so you're using pug so i get how it's working Ugh, pug is gross and they're using bootstrap yeah which i guess is twitter but uh yeah i see no usefulness out of this um all right well yeah that one sucks i mean it works i no hate to the guy who made that it's just i don't see why 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 let's look at one more example now trello clone is cool i mean that actually looks like something you know what i mean whereas the twitter clone just looked like no, literally nothing i can't even believe that they wrote that <laughs> what were they thinking all right let's try one more one more example all right here's our twitter uh trello clone with us i get back end people i usually don't know front end that well but what's with this scroll bar brother at least they got the dragging down dude that's kind of nice snappy this example is good although something's happening here that's not good I'm, I can drag the cards off to their own thing can you even do that on Trello I'm not about to log into Trello right now but I didn't know you could do that either way it's cool well, let's see how they decided to go about it so let's see it's a node server that's way more simple of course they're using pug what is everyone's obsession with pug oh my god look at this look at how complicated this is all these different routes you got to compile the pug file blah 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 this is this could be done so much easier in react see yeah that's a bug <laughs> it saves some stuff i know it's an example right but anyways this is like so much more complicated than it needs to be and will be done five times faster in react pug express compression body parser i mean that's it's lightweight is that its only benefit is it's lightweight because otherwise it, it seems like it's going to take people way longer to do where is it saving is this just like oh i bet it's just cached on the server if we uh restart it i bet they'll go away yeah okay enough confusion Look, I get that this could be beneficial for some, but anything complicated, like even Trello, isn't that complicated. But when it comes to code, there's a good amount of things that happen. Things are moving around, they're getting sorted, they're, you know, manually reordered. Obviously, there is some dependencies that aren't technically being in dependencies right now because they're just being pulled from the web, like for uh, sorting and dragging and stuff like that. And clearly, like, this is this is a bug. This isn't supposed to happen. Either way, I do not get why you would ever do this. Like, this makes way more sense to be a React app. Plus, it kind of seems like it just puts more stress on the server for no reason. By re-rendering everything. Like, I'm not happy about this. I, and, and, and I don't mean like I'm sad about it or something like that. Or mad about it. But when I get some new library or framework or whatever you want to call it, I want to feel like good about it. You know what I mean? Like this, this shouldn't trigger anger and confusion. Now I run into my own issues, setting up my own node server, blah, blah, blah. Because every now and then I, for, I forget a couple things. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. What really matters here is the complicated, how complicated it is for no good reason. And how outside of like very normal standard type stuff is happening here, just to come to the same result, it's not gonna be any faster. It may put more work on the server 
which everyone's into server side rendering these days usually doesn't make a difference but this is like endless re-renders every little thing that gets added to a page or taken off a page has to re-render a, a portion of the html from the page and then calculate where it needs to go comes from the server gets placed by the the page i don't know it just doesn't seem useful this kind of seems like the type of thing that needs a framework built on it rather than even used at all by any normal person in any normal environment right it seems like this should go there should be a wrapper around this that basically makes it feel like a, a normal standard web framework I think that's my takeaway. Pug files are the ugliest thing I've ever looked at, and I don't ever want to look at them again. Someone tried to convince me otherwise, but for the love of God, I hated I hated that whole experience. Trying to figure out what HTMX is doing and how, because everything is so non-standard. Like if you go from React to Vue, you're kind of familiar. You're gonna have to Google quite a few things in order to figure out the differences and stuff like that. But the pages still look like normal HTML. Now, these were just a couple examples using pug files. I get it. But the pages still look like HTML. There's like, you know, in view, there's view, this. They got, they had, they, V, this. They have their own attributes and stuff like that. But they're understandable. Like, V, if makes a lot of sense. When you go back and you compare this example I was looking at, the forend hx swap oob none of this stuff makes any sense and it's it's this is what i'm saying like there should be a wrapper on top of this yeah it would make it, make it a little weightier a heavier file but just because you're able to fit your framework slash library into a single file that's quite small doesn't make it good like this is not going to have a heavy adoption rate in my opinion there is no reason to use this, and I hope to never look at it again. Maybe when they do HTMX3, I know that this is a young thing. It's new and fresh. Maybe three, version 3 will be better. Make a little bit more sense. Maybe their examples will, could be less dumb on their own homepage. Why is there forms in these with no way to submit them, as an example? Why would they not want you to see what they're trying to show you? Even their descriptions of what they're talking about barely explain what they're talking about. Please, HTMX people, if you ever end up seeing this, do better in terms of your examples. And I mean these ones here, not the ones in the GitHub repo. And for the love of God, get better names than before and with no camel, swap oob, If it needs to be a little longer, so be it, for it to make more sense to normal human beings. I can't. If you want to get a job, do not learn HTMX. Do not try to introduce HTMX to your company. Everyone will hate you. 